Welcome to Phone with Drilling Engineering. While we are drilling, we continuously receive directional data from the downhole assembly. And based on these readings, we can draw a beautiful well path, just like you can see here. But in fact, our position in the earth is not that clearly defined. All our measurements are somehow erratic in three di directions, X, Y, and Z. And that is why our position is always subject to a certain degree of uncertainty. This uncertainty can be imagined, like this ball here stretched out in three different axes. We do not know exactly where we are, but we can state at a given probability, for example, 80% or so, that we are within an ellipsoid of uncertainty, somewhere down in the earth. There is no way to give further details of our current location. As long as we drill only a single well, maybe that doesn't matter much. What matters is that we find the oil or gas that we are looking for. Nobody cares if we're a bit further to the left, right, up, or down, compared to the measured values. But if, for example, we are an offshore drilling rig with dozens of existing wells, then it becomes extremely important to know exactly where we drill, so that we can be sure we don't risk any collisions with the existing or even producing wells. We know already that the position of the well we are currently drilling is subject to a certain degree of uncertainty. But the positions of other wells also suffer a certain degree of uncertainty. And that means we have to take a lot of care as we drill by an existing well, so that they do not collide. To decide whether there's a risk of collision or not, we have to consider both ellipsoids of uncertainty. If they intersect or overlap, then we can't fully rule out the possibility of a collision. So what do we do if there's a probability of a collision with another well? Which of course is a very dangerous thing. For example, we could lock both wells once again with a more accurate measuring device. You can pick up better measuring sensors, for example gyro tools, run them through both holes, and as the measurements are more accurate now, our ellipsoid of uncertainty becomes smaller than before. In the best case, we might end up to be able to conclude that the collision risk is now negligible. However, such measurements will take a lot of time and money. Perhaps you would therefore think about some other options. For example, there are special measuring tools which are not so commonly known. Six existing wells are cased with steel pipes. You can use something like a metal detector in your drill string. So if you approach an existing well, you get an alarm from the metal detector so that you can avoid the collision and drill around the well. But again, these special detection tools will definitely cost a lot of money if they are even available at all. Well, that's the price for security. Or we can simply take the risk. It's not sure we'll have a collision. It's just a certain possibility. So we can drill very, very carefully and slowly and continuously check our shell shakers at the surface to see if there's any steel or concrete on the screens. That, of course, would be an alarm signal for us. As a further precautionary measure, you can also shut down the production in the neighboring wells so that they do not produce any oil and gas while we are drilling nearby. All this contributes to minimizing our risk while we drill ahead. There is no unique or true solution. The drilling engineer has to decide on the way to go. And the more he knows about drilling engineering, the easier he can make such decisions. So that's what we teach here in our program of petroleum engineering. We'll be happy to see you here in our lectures, here in Freiburg. Look off.